folks. So here we are, uh, the last piece of the video, which is the summary. I'll give you my final thoughts on everything that uh, we've taken a look at here just uh, over the past uh, 20 minutes or so. So first off is let's take a look at our Z-axis. Um, my thoughts on the Z-axis right here is it is more reliable. I wouldn't say that it's necessarily going to make the thing more accurate. We'll test that later on in another video. But uh, it is. it would be more reliable, easy to maintain. Uh, the stamped steel here, this looks like 16 gauge steel. Uh, it does cost a bit of money to make those forms, so I can see where a little bit of additional cost came in on, uh, on, on raising the price a little bit as they just recently did. So I can definitely see where that, uh, that would come in. Um, the other one is the weight system on here. So definitely, to me, that's a big, big thumbs up. I like the new weight system, makes it easier to remove. And you can get your sled off there. I'm a person that does a lot of tinkering, so thumbs up on the on the reliability uh, of the new frame thumbs up on the uh, the upgrade of the belt uh, the weight system that's those are two good things um, the negative down thing was all the bolts were loose uh, again that's just a quality control item uh, check with suppliers figure that out but uh, I don't give it a complete negative because the reality is this is a DIY system uh, if I receive these things in the mail and I go to assemble them, I check every bolt anyway. If you don't, it's your own fault. But uh, you definitely want to go through and check. Now, MakerMade did uh, provide all the appropriate wrenches, etc., to assemble this unit. And these uh, bolts right here, are, there is an Allen key in there that will fit them. So uh, if you don't check those, you know, to me, it, it's on you as well as MakerMade. So uh, you got two good on there plus a, a small detractor for the bolts being loose and uh, one of those being where I could see where some of that uh, additional cost came in uh, we'll talk about the cost here in a little bit the uh, the next component here is, is on the sled um, I, I'm not a big fan of the new design right here uh, I know they do have these uh, free they've they provided the STL files for people to go ahead and print their own frame you'd have to uh, get some Lexan or Plexi or whatever you want to, to make your own component here uh, But a plus on this is that they did provide the, the frame STL so you can cut your own. That's a great plus uh, Downside is the dust collection. I think it still falls short of a good solution Now having said that I do want to say that it is an upgrade. It is better than the classic M2 but for a fully functional dust collection system, I still think we are, are coming in well under the mark on that. Uh, the next thing that we want to talk about here is uh, the new electrical box. Um, major plus on all the, the color, the, the labels. I can see where silk screening of these would cost a little bit, a uh, little bit of extra money. So I would expect to see a little extra cost on that as well. Um, the, the detractor on this one right here was of course, the labels don't match the uh, the motors, the motor labels, so that's going to cause some confusion with customers, I can imagine. And the other one was the board fell apart when I took this off, which it should not. They should be completely plugged in, secured, uh, everything good, and uh, you know this thing should be as plug as play as possible. So, uh, one good on the box, I like it. Again, see where a little cost comes in. Uh, quality issue on the the getting the labels to match uh, Not only on the motors and on the box, but also in the instruction manual uh, the instruction manuals probably uh, They need to be updated as well based on what that says so one thumbs up um, One neutral need to need to kind of uh, fix the uh, the board issue Falling out that's a cus that's a quality issue. I get that but it's a supplier quality issue uh, the only negative like I had was we started down the path of, of labeling these, but the labels don't match. So we got halfway over the finish line there. Uh, that's on that box. Uh, the next one is packaging. So this one's always been uh, one that I've always just thought, why, why don't we do this, right? So uh, the big one on this is the classic disc, right? When you open up your Maker Made, every Maker Made has this in the top of it. And it's basically the sled. It has the M2 by Maker Made with the center hole out. Now, one of the things that I always thought was funny was we know that we have to align these. And you don't have to build an alignment jig to put in here for your customers. 
you've actually already kind of got one right here. So why wouldn't just update the silk screening for this? Make sure this right here is 18 inch diameter and make sure this center hole is a three inch center hole and put crosshairs in there. Just silk screen that, make sure it's the right size. Then whenever I take this and I go to attach the, the router and everything on there, I can lay my sled right on top of here, line up the center and slide the Z axis back and forth until my bit's right on the, uh, the center lines. That would give you an excellent tool to help your customers properly center their Z axis at literally no cost. I mean, you just need a different silk screen here. So that is something that I think, uh, I think Maker Made could really do and help and enhance and benefit uh, their customers a little bit easier, make it, make it easier for the assembly. Um, the packaging itself, great packaging. I mean, they went far and above and beyond. We have, uh, I have stuff laying all over here, the, the air filled packages, the bubble wrap, the pops and stuff like that. Uh, they really went above and beyond. And I really liked that the, that the box was sorted into uh, four separate compartments, the electronics, the more delicate components, the, the cables, everything were in one compartment, the brackets, the wall brackets, the stamped metal components were all in another one. The Z axis with the eight millimeter screw and the guides, that was all completely encased in foam. I really like that nice soft foam. Uh, the, the box, the control box, it was in its own box, protected again with more foam. So they really went above and beyond to get all of this uh, sealed up, packaged and protected. And as you'd seen from the video, the box that it came in, uh, FedEx, UPS, whoever, they, they, they handled it pretty roughly. There was punches, there was some holes in the box. I can see where one corner on the box, it was squished. It looks like they literally just dropped the box on the corner and it fell down. But uh, everything in here looks like it's uh, pretty right and tight, nothing's damaged, so the packaging was, was right on. Um, the other thing is in that packaging, they've gone above and beyond with providing a lot of the tools you need to assemble this. And a lot of companies don't do that. Uh, I've worked on other CNC's to where you get uh, a little flat tip screwdriver and just some cheesy little uh, Allen wrench or something like this. These guys give you uh, multiple Allen wrenches, all the tools you need to assemble it properly, everything to get it going. So I like that little tool kit. Um, it, it's not something that you're gonna hand down to your kids or anything. I mean, it's just a tool kit to get it on here, get this thing up and running, and then you should, uh, you know, hopefully purchase a, a set of tools that will that will last with the machine. I have a, a whole kit, ratcheting kit that I use. It matches every bolt, every nut that's on, on my system. So uh, they do give you that. You get it up and going, and that, I think that's the biggest thing is when you get something like this in the mail, you want to assemble it as fast as possible. You don't have to run out and buy a bunch of tools. It's already there. You can put it together. Um, you, I, I've seen videos of people putting it together on the kitchen table, wherever, right? They want to get it going. So it's like kids in a candy store or Christmas morning. You want to get it, get it all done. Uh, so there's that. Uh, I do like all of that. So big, big plus on, on all of that. Uh, the packaging. Uh, a little bit of a detractor on this. I've seen, uh, I posted this several times in Facebook where I asked them to do this. Uh, other people thought it was a good idea. It looks like we just didn't come through on this this time. This would be a major benefit to your customers to get, uh, to allow for assembly and alignment so they could go ahead and cut out. Once the unit's run in, then they can cut out a three inch jig so they can make their own alignment tool. But this would at least get them up and running and pretty darn close to in the ballpark. Real simple and cheap to do. Uh, the last thing uh, in here before we get to cost, which is the big one everybody wants to talk about. I was looking at the manuals that are in here. Uh, of course, you have uh, several of your standard items in here. Uh, here's uh, warranty, support, contact information. And I can't tell you how many times people have said, well, you know, I can't get a hold of Maker Made. I didn't know that. Well, it's right here. Maker Made, you know, support at Maker Made. Read your documentation. Make sure you know where all those are. And I want to give a big plus out there to the Maker Made support uh, community. From whenever I email uh, support at Maker Made, they got back with me. I mean, within 24 hours, they were right there. I was missing some screws on my classic unit, and they had them out the door. No questions asked. They were like, "Yep, we'll get it there." So the the support from Maker Made is top notch. Uh, that that is something that you'd, it'd be hard to argue with me on. I think a lot of people have had good uh, quality customer support from Maker Made. 
So just make sure that you, that you read your documentation in here. All of your emails, anything that you would need to do, your contact information, everything's right here. They put it in a single sheet, you know, tape it, smack it up on the board or something like that, keep it around for a few weeks while you need it, and then go from there. Um, here uh, is one, I didn't see this in actually the very first one, maybe it was in there, but uh, compared to the classic M2, this one his, is uh, instructions and warnings. And in here they talk about, you know, safety guidelines, you know, it's heavy, uh, always wear eye protection. And uh, this one here, I, I love this, is wear ear and eye protection when running your machine. These things are really loud, so uh, that's good. They go above and beyond. Uh, and one of the things they have on here is never leave your machine uh, running unattended. I know one of the big things out there now is running a Raspberry Pi, trying to get your machine to run remote with the camera. Um, yeah, I get it if you just want to run in the house or something, but this is not something you should do long term. And uh, so this right here also talks about dust collection, uh, how dust is a major hazard. Make sure you wear a respirator, uh, breathing material, masks, you know, and that, that if we come back to this right here, what I was talking about earlier. Um, a lot of my cuts that I do, uh, they're six, seven, eight hours long. They're large, uh, very high tech cuts. And I'm not going to sit out here with a respirator on my face for seven or eight hours. So I need a, an effective dust collection that matches the speed and work that uh, the Maker Maid does. So that, that's kind of where that comes from. Um, again, your two stickers. Uh, these usually go on uh, a fridge or something for me. I, I'm not a big sticker fan. Um, then this right here, this says that uh, don't call uh, if you ordered your unit from Amazon or something like that. Don't call Amazon. Amazon can't help you. What you need to do is refer back to that other document that says support it, make or made. So this says just, you know, don't call them, call us, we'll take care of you. And they do, again, they, they really, really do. Um, I was looking at the quick start guide here. It's a little bit different from what I've seen on the, the classic one. Uh, they do give you some good breakdowns. They give you some uh, information on there. But one of the things that I liked was each, they've tried breaking it down into just, you know, four simple steps to get the thing up and running. And in each one, they put a QIR code down here to where you can just scan it with your phone and it'll bring up the information from the internet. Uh, I get that everything's going digital today and, and they probably save a little bit of money by not printing out these large manuals and putting them in the box. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's a decent, it's a decent quick start guide. This definitely, you'll never get the machine running with just this. You will have to go on the internet. You will have to get those installation guides. And uh, you'll need the, the design, the cut uh, components for the frame. That's something that you have to pay for yourself, additional wood. But you couldn't do that from here. You, you will have to use that QIR code to go to the website to get the dimensions for all your lumber. So this right here, um, quick start guide. Yeah, it's a quick start guide, but it's really a quick start guide on how to get to the information you need to start a quick start guide. So that's kind of where we're at with that. All right, um, now on to the very last component here, cost. So um, the the classic Maker Made, I think, for the full M2 kit was $9.99, of course, plus taxes, et cetera, and, and shipping. So $9.99. Uh, on their website, I pulled it up earlier, they got it for $11.98. Now, having said that, Maker Maid does run a lot of sales. Uh, I've seen 15% off sales out there. I've seen 10% uh, today, I was, I was on the store and uh, a thing kept popping up, you know, a springtime sale, short-term sale, only 10% off. So if you're looking at that, that's $11.98. You're looking at, uh, you know, 119 bucks off there. Uh, that puts you, you know, right back down to close to the $1,000 range. So, you know, is the $200 too much? I get it. It's a price increase whenever I look at what they've done with the, with the stamped metal frame. As an engineer, I know what it takes to, what it costs to, to make those blanks and as well as make the forms for those stamps. Um, those are not cheap. I mean, an, an average stamp can cost you $50,000 to build just the form for it, for the machine to stamp those. So I think they put a lot of money and effort into that. And it is for a good reason. I think it's a great reliability upgrade. So is the $200 worth it? I think, yeah, you're going to get it with, um, you know, your, your upgrades to your box here easily, your install, easier installation, a little bit more guidance. Uh, a little easier understanding guide to get to the information that you need to know. 
you get great customer service behind it. If they do little things like this, upgrading this so it'll help you with your centering device, it's not a tool you gotta keep around, but it'll get you going quicker. Uh, honestly, uh, if they'd have gone up more than $200, I might've asked whether or not that was really uh, a reasonable cost, but knowing what I've seen here, I would say the $200 cost is probably, it, it's worth it, it's, it's with, within uh, reality and the grasp. But keep in mind, again, I, some of the upgrades they did, a lot of these upgrades are cosmetic. Um, they're used to enhance the user uh, interface to the machine. It doesn't necessarily make the machine more accurate. It makes it more user friendly, easier to assemble, easier to maintain, easier to work on. It'll lower your, your life cycle costs, so I get that. Um, they still fall short on a couple of items, but th that was that way on the, the Classic M2 as well. And I know it's a big problem on some of the uh, the older, the basic kit, the jumpstart kit and stuff. They, I still see those posts come through where people are talking about the same thing over and over. Uh, those, we need to get those resolved someday. Um, you know, again, make them made if you're out there, but we get those resolved and we'll be there. But again, on the price point, the price jumped to $1,198. Uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, I could see that. I, I agree with the two hundred dollars. It is it is there. Now, if you did not get, um, let's say you just recently ordered it and you got the classic versus the new one, I think uh, the question you need to ask yourself is not necessarily is this one better than this one right here. There are upgrades to that to that, but for me personally. Um, you know, there's two types of people that use these. There are the tinkers, the ones that will play with it. They'll, they'll make it their own. They'll change it. They'll design new tools for it. That's kind of me. A lot of people know my reputation. That's what I do. Uh, then there are those others that buy this and they have a home business and they just want to cut stuff out. They don't want to worry about the machine. They want it to be more reliable. You know, if that's the kind of realm you're in, that's, that's what you're looking for with the new M2. It's, it'll probably be less maintenance. Le it'll be less maintenance, easier to maintain. Uh, easier to handle, easier to use. Uh, the accuracy will review that in, in something coming up. But in the classic M2 here, it still has the extruded frame on here. Uh, I like that personally because if I ever decide that I want to extend my Z axis, I just have to buy a couple pieces of extruded aluminum, put it on the side, drill the same holes, and I can go from you know, six inches or five inches up to 10 inches and give myself some good room on there for my Z axis. It, there's just a lot more things I could do with the old design. The new design again is more plug and play. So uh, it depends on what type of a person you are. Do you want to piddle with your tools? You want to play with them? You want to fix them? You want to design new stuff for them? Or do you want to just plug it in, run it, cut some stuff, make some signs, some home interior decorator stuff, whatever it may be, some furniture. You want to sell that? That's what the new one is, is really designed for. It makes it more efficient and easier to use. So uh, that's, my, that's my, uh, my review here. Basically, a lot of good thumbs up. We still have some things to work on on the, on the new 2021 M2, but I can, I, I'm, I'm assured from uh, you know, the M2 team that they are constantly working on new upgrades, things they're looking for, new ways to do things. They want to upgrade the system. They want to make it more accurate. That you know, that's the goal in life is to make this a more viable product. Uh, so I know we're, the M2, the 2021 M2, is not going to be the last one. Uh, there'll be another one coming up sooner or later. Uh, that all products grow, all products change. So you know, I'm kind of looking forward to seeing where they're going to take this thing. So anyway, uh, thanks a lot, folks. Uh, catch me on Facebook and. Uh, uh, Maker Made uh, user group, the owners group. You can ping me in there, ask me questions. I'm always available. Uh, as for that, our next video will be the assembly on this. We'll do that uh, pretty soon to see if the new design makes the assembly any more easier, if it still has the same pain points as the old one did. Uh, I'll post that here uh, in the coming weeks. So farewell from uh, two tankards and have a good day. Mm -hmm.